Chapter 12 Phil is asleep for a long time after his fall. They bring him into the infirmary, where Eret swathes his chest in fresh bandages and tends to his various scrapes and bruises. He falls unconscious within moments of them laying him down, balanced precariously between Wilbur and Technoblade, until they lower him safely down. He's terrifyingly pale, save for the bright flush of his cheeks, which screams of a fever caused by pain and exhaustion. His breathing hitches with every breath, and his body writhes when Eret applies even the slightest pressure to his chest. He's lucky, Eret says, after Phil's eyes have fluttered mercifully shut. If he had hit the water at a different angle, he could have shattered his arms or legs or even his skull. Lucky isn't quite the word Technoblade would choose. Phil looks so small, so broken, that it makes his stomach turn to even look at him. It's scary to see a man, usually as bright as the sun, look so dim and tired. His skin is painted with bruises from the impact, his head wrapped in bandages from where he'd been struck. There are welts around his wrists from two tight cuffs, and the sight of them makes his rage burn anew. He wishes he could find the one that did this to him, and give him the same treatment. Wilbur looks at them with nothing but sorrow beside him. I tried to stop them, he murmurs. You did what you could, Technoblade reassures him. There's a companionable air between them that hadn't been there before. A mutual understanding, a shared sorrow. Even if Technoblade doesn't understand exactly what transpired, something had changed between him and Phil during the fight. He'd seen the way Wilbur fought to stay by his father's side, heard the way he defended him with a tongue like fire. He'd seen the flash of loyalty in Wilbur's eyes, the same devotion that Phil had managed to kindle in Technoblade's own heart. He'd seen the way Phil leaned into Wilbur's touch, the way Wilbur had supported him without question even in the face of the enemy. Those aren't the actions of a man ready to betray his captain. They're the actions of a son who, despite everything, loves his father. And if Phil trusts Wilbur, so does Technoblade. Wilbur seems to return the sentiment. I'm not sure what happened between you, he says quietly at night as he spreads a damp cloth across Phil's brow. Fundy rests beside them, Phil's hand in his own, his cheeks squished up against the mattress as he dozes. But I can't blame you for it. I'd be a hypocrite if I did. Technoblade gives him a weak smile. It's as much of a thank you as he can manage around the sudden burn in his eyes and the closing of his throat. He pointedly turns away, to scrub his face with his sleeve, and Wilbur watches him with curious, intelligent eyes. There's no judgment to be found there, only genuine curiosity. You love him. It isn't a question. Yeah. Technoblade rasps. His voice sounds wet. His eyes still burn. That's good, Wilbur murmurs. His lips twitch into a small smile. Phil's never been good at letting people in. I can tell he cares about you, though. He sighs heavily and leans down to brush a stray lock of blonde away from Phil's cheek. I'm glad he finally has a friend. Technoblade can't help but match his smile. I'm glad I have one, too. The crew treats him differently after the battle. They try not to. He can see it in their eyes, feels it in the way they seem to tread lightly around him. They're trying not to betray their distrust of him, but he sees it all the same. That casual familiarity he'd come to know, come to love, is now gone, leaving behind something stiff and forced. They still listen to him, still obey his orders, but it's less out of respect and more out of fear. Or, for some, begrudging acceptance. He can't bring himself to blame them, no matter how the distance makes his heart ache. He betrayed their trust. He kept a secret from them, an important secret, one that was bound to impact the ship's dynamic. 
he'd posed as one of them when he'd once been their enemy, once been one of the very people trying to hunt them down. He'd imprisoned their captain, and then taken his place. On the first day he'd joined their ranks, he'd noted their loyalty to Phil. Tommy's bull-headed bravery when confronting him, and the suspicious glances of the others as he'd been introduced in the wake of his battle with one of their own. Their devotion to Phil is one forged out of love. How Phil managed to capture their hearts in the short time he'd known them is beyond him, but he'd managed to do the same to Technoblade. And now Technoblade is known as the one who nearly escorted Phil to his death. But everything is about to change, he hopes. It will all be explained in time, and they'll be able to get back to normal in no time, because Phil's already assured him of his forgiveness. And if Phil can forgive him, surely the rest of the crew can too. They'll be able to sit everyone down and explain it together, and over time they'll learn to trust him like they did before. He looks forward to that moment with an eager heart, sick of having secrets to hide. He's ready to lay it all on the table, to work past it and move on, for the sake of Phil and the crew as much as himself. The moment comes much sooner than he expected. Phil is awake. Phil is awake and moving, against Arid's best wishes. He appears from below deck late the next afternoon, one arm slung carefully around Wilbur's shoulders, his son's hand at his waist. He's pale and grimacing and wobbly on his feet, but the mere sight of him is enough to bring the crew clamoring to meet him halfway. There are worried murmurs, happy exclamations, and warm wishes as they surround him, and Phil's lips twitch up into a tired but genuine smile. You are an idiot. Hello to you too, Tommy, Phil replies, and makes a soft, pleased noise as the taller boy leans down to pull him into a gentle embrace. It's short, but Phil leans into it, his eyes fluttering shut, and Tommy seems to cling to him like a vice in the brief moment they're together. He shakes himself when they inevitably pull free, trying to act nonchalant, but Technoblade can see the way his gaze flickers across Phil, scanning him attentively for any signs of discomfort. You okay? He asks simply, averting his gaze with a flush when Phil positively grins. Aw, oh, mate. Phil coos. I'll be okay. Don't you worry about me. I wasn't worried. Ronbu approaches next, and does not hesitate to embrace Phil. He nestles his chin atop the smaller man's head and makes a strange, soothing noise in the back of his throat, akin to a purr. They don't separate for a while. Ronbu's arms carefully entwined around Phil's shoulders as they sway ever so slightly and when they do, the kid's eyes are wet with relieved tears. Phil makes another quiet noise, a careful hum, as he gives Ronbu's hands a firm squeeze. I'm all right, mate, really. You scared me, Ronbu admits. I thought we'd lost you. I'm not going anywhere, mate. Can't get rid of me that easily. The rest of the crew follows suit. Nicky surges forward into Phil's chest and squeezes him so tight he yelps, but he's smiling all the while, even ducking down to cup her cheek and swipe away the tears that are flowing freely down her cheeks. Jack approaches from behind, clapping Phil gently on the shoulder, and all the while Eret maintains careful proximity, should Phil need their help. It's a joyous occasion a time for celebration in the wake of their unexpected victory and their first mate's recovery, and the crew's morale is visibly strengthening with each moment Phil spends in their midst. It's sorely needed, and Technoblade delights in the way his friend's eyes crinkle with mirth and soften with every passing touch and murmured affection. And then Phil's gaze lands on Technoblade, and his smile drops. Phil. Technoblade breathes, and rushes to meet him halfway as the man moves toward him. His heart flutters, and he moves to wrap the smaller man up in a hug, surging forward with a breathy laugh, nearly ready to scoop him up and either spin him and toss him overboard for his stupidity, and then... Crack! 
His head snaps sideways, his cheeks smarting. Phil staggers backward, his palm still raised, his teeth bared in a snarl. Don't touch me. It wasn't a hard blow, just enough to startle him, Phil's strength immensely hampered by his injuries. But it's the thought of it that truly stings, because Phil just raised a hand against him. Phil is glaring daggers at him, bristling and poised to strike again. And for a moment, all Technoblade can feel is complete and utter confusion. And then he sees the look on Phil's face, and it's the same devastated anger he's seen once before, back during the fight, during his confrontation with Dream when... when... I can't believe it! Phil hisses as the crew murmurs in shock around them. You bastard, you motherfucker! You were actually going to do it, weren't you? Phil, what the fuck? Tommy's voice is high-pitched and indignant. Phil, Wilbur says softly, and moves as if to support him when Phil nearly doubles over with a strangled wheeze, his feet stumbling beneath him. Phil waves off his help, his gaze hardening as he straightens once more, clutching at his shirt as he draws himself back to full height. The bandages beneath are suddenly glaringly obvious. Phil pays his injuries no heed, and the full heat of his anger is blistering as he turns it on Technoblade. Was it that tempting, Techno? Turning us in for what? A ship? Your old rank? In Phil's eyes, Technoblade can see the pain of his past betrayal. He knows this is a response not out of anger, at least not fully, but out of fear. His friend is cornered and desperate and afraid, afraid of another betrayal, of turning around only to be stabbed in the back again. He understands it, but it doesn't make it any easier to swallow. Not when the anger is so misplaced. Not when he's backing Technoblade into a corner himself. Phil, that's not... That's not what, Technoblade. I saw you. He did. Technoblade knows he did. He remembers Phil's stricken face vividly. The way his friend had frozen mid-battle at the sight of Technoblade's hesitation. Even if only for a moment, he'd genuinely considered trading their lives away for his own selfish comfort. For a shot at his old life. His heart aches with guilt at even considering Dream's offer. But he knows guilt isn't enough right now. Not when his weakness could have cost him not only a victory, but also the lives of his crew. The lives of his friends. Phil, I know I messed up. I shouldn't have even considered it, I just... He runs a hand through his hair with a shaky sigh, and feels the heat of Phil's gaze burning at his skin. Look, for a moment... For a moment I was tempted. I'll admit that, but I couldn't, Phil. I can't. I won't. Not ever. You're my crew. My friends. And Phil scoffs, tossing his head back. You say that, Techno. But I saw the look in your eyes. You would have taken it. If we hadn't been there. If we hadn't been around to see it. If it had just been you and Dream with nobody to play witness, you would have turned on us in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Phil's words are like claws in his heart. Cruel and unfair. Because he just proved he wouldn't, hadn't he? He'd fought Dream for them. For the sake of the crew. To keep them alive and safe. And yet here Phil is, spitting injustices at him, as if he was really going to turn them in. Technoblade's anger burns white-hot in his veins, wild and dangerous, his own tongue loosening as the stress and pressure bottled up for so many weeks finally uncork. You know what? Maybe I do understand why your crew left you in the first place. Technoblade snaps right back his tongue as sharp as the sword at his belt. Keeping secrets, accusing me of being a traitor. Maybe the mutiny was all just an excuse to get a better captain. He regrets the words as soon as they leave his mouth, his tongue tasting as though it's been coated in bitter poison. He regrets it even more 
when he turns and catches Phil's gaze. Phil's eyes flash with hurt, his mouth dropping open with a protest that dies before it's even begun. He looks as though he's just been slapped, and Technoblade can see Wilbur surging forward from the crowd like a bullet, shoving his way between them. Wilbur's face is cold fury, his shoulders squared, his gaze narrowed as he turns on Technoblade. Shut up, Wilbur hisses. You have no idea what you're talking about, so don't you dare- You think he didn't tell me? Technoblade interrupts, taking a step forward until he's nearly nose to nose with the younger man. You think I don't know exactly what you did? Wilbur's lips are a thin line. Imagine turning on your own father. Imagine leaving him to die and taking everything he loved with you. But no, I'm the traitor. He pushes past Wilbur in his moment of weakness to shove his finger in Phil's face. As if it wasn't your fault I'm here in the first place. You were the one recruiting me. You were the one with the damn favor. I never wanted to be here in the first place. I just wanted to give you a second chance. You used me. Technoblade spits. And he knows that isn't fair. He knows Phil would never. But he's experienced enough of it in his life to leave lasting scars. And he's hurt. And angry. And it just feels so good to let it all out. You just needed someone to cover for you. To take the fall because you were too scared to be captain yourself. Techno. What, Phil? Don't tell me it isn't true. I wasn't your first choice. Just the one you happened to find. I wasn't meant for the job. I was just convenient. Phil doesn't respond. There's a war being waged behind his eyes, and the silence drags on and on. Technoblade is the one to break the silence. You're just too much of a coward to admit it. I'm the coward. How long were you planning to keep everyone in the dark about what you did to me? About what you were gonna do? Oh, I keep secrets? Technoblade's fist clenches at his side. Phil should count himself damn lucky that he hasn't already taken a swing. Or rather, perhaps, unlucky, because Technoblade retaliates with something much worse. And when, exactly, were you going to tell the crew about your little curse? Phil flinches, as if stung. As do the crew. Phil? Tommy is the first to speak, and the waver in his voice is almost enough to make Technoblade regret spilling the news like this. Almost. Phil, what does he mean? I... Phil's mouth opens and closes, his jaw working as he grapples for something to say. He shoots Technoblade a quick look, full of shock and betrayal and hurt, but Technoblade stands firm. I was going to tell you guys, I promise. I just... I didn't... Phil's cursed! Technoblade snaps impatiently, and Phil shoots him another look, this time almost scared. It's not like that... Fucking hell, mate! Hang on a second here! He exclaims, holding up his hands placatingly as several speculative glances turn his way. I'm not cursed. It's not like that. It's this locket and it- You're cursed! Jack says, stone-faced. And you weren't going to tell us? I was! Phil cries. And oh, Technoblade's heart does tug a little at the flicker of panic he hears there. Fuck! I swear to you, I was going to tell you, I just... Is this why the Navy showed up? Ronbu asks softly. Twice? Tubbo chimes in, and his glare is as sharp as daggers. Phil, you should have told us. Nikki says softly. She looks sad. Eret's just quiet. And so is Tommy. The kid's face is a mix of several emotions, confusion and anger, to name a few, but there's also hurt, and it's directed at both of them, furtive glances flickering between the two as if he can't quite decide who to direct his emotions at. His mouth opens and closes, as if to chime in, but no sound escapes him. For once, Tommy is silent. The whole crew is watching, waiting. 
Whether for Phil's excuse or for Technoblade to continue, he's unsure. Nevertheless, he can feel the weight of their gazes on him, can feel the hair on the back of his neck rising, prickling uncomfortably as his feet shift beneath him. They're watching, watching him, and it's a painful reminder of how they've treated him since the battle. Someone's eyes always on his back, keeping a careful eye out for even the slightest hint that he might turn on them. The bitter sting of their distrust is back full force, and it leaves him searching desperately for any sign of a friendly face, even just one person that might still believe in him after everything. His gaze settles on Wilbur. Wilbur, Phil's son. Wilbur, Phil's former first mate. Wilbur, silver-tongued and quick-witted and recklessly loyal, standing resolutely at Phil's side even as the crew doubts their leaders. Wilbur, who was somehow able to rebuild his bridges, while Technoblade sits desperately grasping at straws as they slip through his fingertips. Wilbur, who will undoubtedly join the crew of the Argo, who will settle comfortably back into place under Phil's wing. And where does that leave Technoblade? He's no longer needed, he realizes, as he stares at father and son. Phil refuses captaincy out of his own self-doubt, his faltering sense of worth, and now he's been proven wrong, the one who turned on him back at his side. Phil can resume his position now, can take up the mantle with Wilbur at his side, and Technoblade can go back to his old life at the docks, far away from piracy and crime and everything he'd sworn never to touch. He doesn't need to be captain anymore. What? Phil's breathless question jerks him out of his thoughts, and it's only then that he realizes he's spoken aloud. His friend is staring at him with nothing but blatant shock and dawning horror, his lips half-parted and his head tilted as though he doesn't understand. So Technoblade clarifies. It's true, isn't it? I can go now. I can leave. I've sure as hell fulfilled my end of the deal at this point. Besides, it's not like anyone would protest, least of all you. You promised me you wouldn't leave. Phil's voice wobbles, his exclamation sudden and unexpected, and some of the anger is blunted by the note of fear Technoblade catches. He searches his friend's face and sees wide-eyed desperation and a lip caught between his teeth, one arm curled around his bandaged chest as he heaves for breath. You said you wouldn't be like the others. You told me you wouldn't leave me. You don't exactly need me anymore, do you? Technoblade snaps back and relishes in the way Phil recoils. He gestures with one hand to Wilbur. You've got him now, don't you? What? Go ahead, take it all back. I know you want to. You can be captain again. You've got your first mate back, after all. You don't need me to fill in any more. If Technoblade looked a little closer, perhaps he'd see the way Phil's words are fueled by hurt and panic and desperation and the pain that still lingers with each breath. Instead, he's blinded by those very same emotions, which taint his heart and twist his tone into something bitter and vengeful, and spur his words on into something cruel, something he doesn't mean. You don't need me, Phil, he says. And I don't need you. There's a soft intake of breath, Wilbur makes a furious sound, halfway between a gasp and a snarl. Technoblade doesn't spare him the time, not even so much as a glance. His focus is entirely on Phil. Phil, who looks at him with an eerily blank expression, his blue gaze unreadable beneath the storm on the surface, his fingertips twitching where they rest at his side and curl around his ribs. Phil whose breath hitches with every other attempt, stuttering haphazardly over splintered bones yet to fully heal. Phil, who worries his lip between his teeth and does not respond, instead merely gazing at Technoblade with that same damned look, empty in a way that makes Technoblade's blood simultaneously boil and freeze, 
because he wanted a reaction, but not like this. He backtracks, stumbling, because the light in Phil's eyes has died, and the anger is beginning to fade in its wake, and then... Maybe you're right. Oh. There are tears, brimming, in the corner of Phil's eyes, a glassy sheen distorting blue into gray. There's an angry flush to his cheeks, and his teeth are gritted halfway between a grimace and a smile. A smile that looks wrong. So uncharacteristic of him in the way that it twitches and wobbles and threatens to break at any moment. Maybe I was wrong, Phil rasps. Maybe you are just like the rest. And gods, does that sting. You're one to talk. Technolite answers immediately, voice as cold as ice. I thought I could trust you. I thought I could count on you. I thought you believed in me. Don't you dare, Phil says, and he watches his friend's lashes flutter desperately, tiny droplets beginning to gather there. Don't say that. Not when. Not when I trusted you with everything, Techno. I showed you my heart, and you... You fucking... He gestures wildly, messy and angry and uncoordinated. You were willing to throw it away. After everything, you were willing to give it up for... For the fucking Navy. Not this again. Excuse me? Look, I understand you've had some bad encounters with them, but... Shut the fuck up, Techno. Don't you dare say another word. I can't believe this. I can't believe you. They took everything from you, even your hand. And you're still gonna try and defend them? I made a mistake, Phil. I was punished accordingly. For what? Surviving? For siding with a criminal. A beat. Right. Phil's voice sounds surprisingly flat. I forgot. That's all I am to you, isn't it? You were rightfully arrested for crimes of piracy. They were going to kill me, Techno. Get your head out of your ass. You chose this, Phil. He reminds him. You're the one who chose this life. You're the one who decided to stay. You could have stopped. You could have renounced piracy after... He bites back what he wants to say. But the meaning is still clear. Phil's face crumpling in anguish and rage alike. But you didn't. You chose to stay a pirate. To be a criminal. You knew the consequences, and those... Those were the consequences. Don't you go there, Technoblade. Phil breathes, his voice suddenly painfully quiet. You know it wasn't like that. You know exactly what I went through, what I saw, what I lost. And his voice pitches into a breathy giggle one that lacks any humor at all. <laughs> You're a damn hypocrite, Technoblade. I chose to be a pirate. And what about you? A navy officer turned criminal. You became the very thing you say you hate so much. You became one of us, Technoblade. You were the one who caused this in the first place. You and your damned curse. Without you, I'd still have my rank, my ship, my life. My crew would still be here. You took everything. What? I saved you. Well, sometimes I wish you'd just left me. At least then I wouldn't be here. At least I wouldn't be a pirate, a criminal. He spits the last word out like a curse, uncaring for the way it makes the crew shuffle around him, shock and confusion and concern giving way to indignance. You know what they taught me in the Navy, Phil? The words are flowing spilling from his lips before he has the chance to think, to contemplate the consequences. His rational mind is forfeit, giving way to the righteous fury that burns like a fire in his veins, and every dangerous little thought he's had since the start begins to rear its ugly head. They taught me that the only thing a pirate is good for is the gallows, and I'm starting to think they might be right. You don't mean that. I'd rather be dead than what I am now than what you made me become. Silence. And then? Maybe you should have gone down with your ship then, mate. And Technoblade freezes. Phil does too, his eyes widening and his lips half-parted, 
one hand extended as if he can snatch it back out of the air. But it's too late, because Technoblade doesn't see any of this. Doesn't see the regret and devastation across his friend's face. Instead, all he sees is red, and all he can hear is the roar of his blood in his ears as his stomach sinks like a stone, icy tendrils creeping through his veins at the confirmation of the very thought that's been nagging at the back of his mind since that fateful night. Maybe I should have. He agrees softly, and in an instant, the fight drains out of him, leaving him shivering and hurt and bitter and tired. And so he retreats, making no attempt to excuse himself, nor to console his friend, who looks on the verge of tears himself. He leaves Phil alone, surrounded by his crew and yet so very alone, and does not look back. The door to his cabin slams shut. <laughs>